All right, guys. <clears throat> Welcome to Hanley Strength System Podcast. We're calling this Strength Wins Podcast. I'm here with World Series champ and hometown hero, Matt Caesar. Um, and we're sitting in his home batting cage, which is pretty, pretty sick. And uh, so we're going to interview Matt. Um, he's getting ready to head out to spring training. And, um, you know, it's been a pleasure uh, working with him this, this winter. And uh, so I wanted to get an interview with him and talk about a bunch of different things um, before he leaves so we could give you guys some, uh, some insight on Matt, Matt and uh, some, some of the things that he does as well as his mindset and, and, and how he's achieved what he's achieved so far. Uh, welcome, Matt. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, of course, of course. And uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, just your timeline. Like, you know, you grew up. What sports did you play? Um, you know, how did it how did it all get to this point? Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, I grew up in Cape May, uh, Irma. Um, you know, I've been here all my life. I uh, grew up playing basketball, wrestling, uh, football, hockey, soccer. I mean, you name it, I played it. Um, I kind of took more interest into to football and baseball the older I got. Um, did winter track uh, during the winter months. Um, I uh, always was trying to play travel ball everywhere I went just to to continue to play against, you know, competition. Um, uh, sh long story short, went to Villanova to play baseball and football. Um, got a great education. Uh, graduated with uh, a liberal arts degree. Um, played baseball for three years, played football for four years. Was drafted in 2010 by, by the Cubs. Uh, was able to go back and play my senior year of football and either choose between the NFL or baseball, and I ended up choosing baseball. Uh, and I've been with the Cubs, or I was with the Cubs from 2010 to 2017. Uh, won a World Series with them, and I'm currently with the Arizona Diamondbacks. So tell us a little bit, go back to um, the year that you got drafted and going back to college. Um, how did that, like, how did you feel? What, what transpired there? Because I, I had talked to you about that, and it's a pretty amazing thing, um, you know, getting drafted and still going back to school um, and, and, and finishing school and then, you know, going on to play. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, Villanova was, uh, those four years were probably the, the best four years of my life. Uh, had an awesome time, made the... Uh, made some best friends. And um, like I said, I was able to play football and baseball. We won a national championship, Division One AA in football. Um, and that kind of set my table for, for the draft. You know, I had a, had a good run there and um, was able to, to open up, up some eyes, even Division One AA. Um, and was able to, to get on some draft boards as, you know, mid to late rounds. Um, so I had a, had a pretty good idea where I was going to go after, after football season. Um, and like I said, I was drafted to, in 2010, went and played baseball for a summer in, um, in Boise, Idaho with the Cubs affiliate. Uh, so, so they picked you up the summer of your junior into senior yeah, year? Yeah, so they drafted me in 2010, and then I went and played baseball that summer, and then I came back to play football for my senior year. Pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was awesome. Um, like I said, I, was, I wouldn't – change change those four years for anything right cool and uh so something else happened in college um something that it, it nothing really happened but um you decided to do something in college that um really has set the tone for a lot of things and and the foundation that you have and all that stuff so tell us about um your foundation and the blood blood donors and all that stuff. Yeah, so so freshman year, um, during the springtime, we had uh, Coach Sally has a bone marrow drive uh, every year. Uh, it's called Get in the Game, and, and we kind of round up as many students as possible to, to do a cheek swab. And by doing the cheek swab, they have the potential to save someone's life life with uh, with 
bone marrow cancer um, and uh, bone cancer, leukemia. Uh, I mean, they can do a lot with it, with the, your bone marrow. And so I signed up as a freshman and then my junior year I was called to donate and it was, uh, it was actually during football season. And, you know, I went in and told Coach Talley, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready to do this. And it was right in, uh, during our playoffs. So he, you know, he, he, was, he was happy, but, you know, it would have been better off if right. I could have played. Um, but I had a chance to save a life, and that's what I was going to do. Uh, for some crazy reason, um, the little girl couldn't accept the bone marrow at the time. Uh, I guess she was too weak to accept it, or her immune system wasn't good enough. And we had to set off, or so you were able to play. In yeah, the we playoffs. we put back um, the procedure, right? And you know, played in the playoffs, won a national championship, and was the MVP of the game. Um, so then during baseball season, I was called to donate to her, and everything was final. We were ready to go, and so I donated uh, my bone marrow to her. And the end of the season, missed about three weeks, and came back, and my first at bat back hit a homer and had a great series and the Cubs were at that series and and they ended up, ended up drafting me in the fifth round cool very cool um so for anybody listening or watching uh you can watch um isn't there there's a story about yeah. the bone marrow yeah it's on uh, I just type my name into YouTube yeah. or uh or Vimeo and it's it's just uh yeah there's a, there's a great story on Matt and the bone marrow and how he meets the girl that he donated to, and um, it's a pretty, pretty neat story. Um, so tell us a little bit about the foundation um, and what you do now with that, uh, and, and, and tell everybody about that. Yeah, so uh, so we kind of we kind of play off Coach Tally. Well, that was the idea, you know, to to you know we really didn't have Natalie and I, my wife, we didn't really didn't have an idea about the foundation, but we wanted to be able to help people. So the first two years, we, we teamed up with Coach Tally, we raised money, and we donated to um, community members who were suffering from cancer. Um, then we kind of branched out on our own, and, and we have the Matthew Caesar Foundation, and we still do the same thing. We, uh, we raise money every year, and we, uh, we donate to the school system. Um, we pretty much donate to, to everybody in the community, whoever is in need, whether it's you know cancer, medical, um, food you know we we try and take care of as many people as we can cool very cool um so you're getting ready to head out to spring training you want to tell everybody where you're at and and what's going on with that uh yeah i mean we uh i signed up to the arizona diamondbacks for a year um we head out in spring training in february 6th uh had a great great off season you know Mike's my trainer. We did uh, we did a lot of great things. Worked out six days a week, uh, grinded every day. You know, I had a long way to go, and and uh, Mike, you got you helped me out big time. Um, but right now I feel great. You know, I, I get massage, see chiropractor. You know, I I really wanted to focus on get my body healthy this year, and and that was uh, that was my main goal, and I think that's what it, what would happen. Yeah, so it's cool that you brought that up because I want to talk about. So, Matt's had some injuries, right? Um, and he uh, he did everything that he needed to do this off season to um, you know to correct those things, right? Yeah. And uh, and tell us like about like because we talk about in training the mindset and um, how like. There's so many people out there that want, but they're not willing to put the work in. Yeah. And like, so tell us a little bit about like, you know, what you do on a daily basis, because you know people don't understand what's required um, to achieve the level of strength and conditioning, the level of health and fitness, the level of um, elite athlete, right? Um, you know, everybody like looks at a magazine or looks at Instagram and they want to look like that. And so they think a few couple good workouts yeah. during the week and a couple salads and uh, and they could go do whatever they want on the weekends. Right. And they 
you know, they don't, they don't understand why they can't, they can't look like that or they can't feel like that or their lifts aren't going up. Right. So tell us a little bit about like your day, um, your mindset and like how you go about, like how you take care of your body, how you come down here on a daily basis, how you drive to Philly to get work done on yourself. Yeah. Like all these things people don't understand, like the commitment that's required right to achieve th that level yeah well um came in at 188 and you know one of my main goals like i said was to get healthy and then you know I, I always like to put on weight in the off season just um just just so when i go into spring training it's hot you know it's 100 degrees in arizona um it's easier for me to keep that weight on and um you know not lose all that weight but yeah like my my weekly schedule is you know, Monday I get a massage uh, in the mornings, um, come home, eat, eat eight eggs, oatmeal, um, go to the gym, lift for, you know, it's it's not lifting for two hours, but, you know, it's, you know, we stretch, we, I, you know, you roll me out, uh, we do pre-work, uh, we do post-work, you know, so it's a lot of things that go into the workout. Um, and then Mondays, I'll, I'll come down here. My brother will throw to me. We'll hit Tuesdays. I work out in the morning, uh, drive up to Philly to see a chiropractor. He, gives, do, he does ART and, and makes sure, you know, my hips are aligned, everything's aligned. And then I'll hit afterwards for about two hours. Um, Wednesdays, I, Wednesday's kind of like an easy day for me. Um, I work out at, you know, what, whatever time I work out is 11 o'clock. Um, Thursdays is, you know, pretty much the same thing as Tuesdays. You know, I wake up, go up to Philly, see my chiropractor, uh, hit, come home. And Fridays is, you know, I'll get another massage. I'll get, you know, Penny will give me a massage Friday mornings. And then I'll go to the gym. And Saturday mornings is, you know, wake up, go to the gym at 7. And, you know, Sunday is pretty much my only day off. But, you know, even, even still with Sunday, I, I always try and, you know, I really try and, like, give my body a rest so I have uh I have some like you know leg machines that tell that, them about yeah that. I have uh I use these leg machines that um it, they pretty much compress your muscles to create blood flow uh you put them on your legs they they blow up and they they shrink and that that is supposed to help recovery um so yeah like I said you know we I and I I work work my tail off all the time and it's um you know you're talking about the mindset yeah I just try and do everything to you know, have an edge on on my opponent or, or even, right. you know, your, your teammates. You know, you, you want to be better than everybody. Right. And that's how I, I pretty much take my days is to try and be the best I can be. Yeah. And and, and it shows. Like, you're, you're like uh, a regimented guy, right? You uh, – what time you go to bed? Yeah, I go to bed at 9 o'clock every night. And that's another thing, you know, we, we didn't talk about or we do talk about, but I didn't mention it. You know, my, my eating schedule is like – very regimented, you know, and, and, you know, we always, we always joke, you know, I don't, I don't really eat for the taste, I eat for the performance. Right. Um, so if I have to eat chicken, rice, and spinach every day, you know, three times a day or four times a day, that's what I'm going to do. Right. You know, just because I want to get that, uh, those anti-inflammatories, and I, and I want to help, you know, I want my food to help me recover faster. Yeah. You know, so that's, there's always like, uh, there's always like an edge in, in that you continue to do, no matter what, throughout the day to like make you better. Of course. Course. Yeah, so um, so it's really like a, a structured schedule, um, you know, whether it's training, training and hitting, uh, training, hitting, massage, uh, throughout that whole thing, you're eating um, throughout the day, every three hours, um, you're drinking a ton of water, you're not putting any toxins in your body, right. um, you know, and, and, and that, that stuff pays off huge you know um there's so many people out there that um you know would be so much better off if they just took a little bit more care of their body and uh and got a little bit extra sleep yeah. you know and all of us there's there's something that we can all do like I, you know i'm not excluded from that right. um we all have things that we can always improve and i think if you're looking for those improvements or those you know those ways to, to get better, whether it's in sports, um, fat loss or health and wellness, 
whether it's in uh, being a better father or uh, parent or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, well, the, I think the, there's so many ways that you can try to better your life. Yeah, and I, and I think the biggest thing is, is, is setting goals. You know, like my goal was to gain weight. You know, I came in at 188. I'm 197 now. Right. You know, my, my goal was to, to be healthy. You know, I came in with a jacked up, you know, hamstring and calf and, and now I'm healthy, right. you know, and that's like, you know, I always set a goal for myself or set goals for myself in the beginning of the year. And I tried to achieve those goals, you know, whether they're personal team goals and, you know, it's just, just ways to like continue to work and, and get better. You know, right. there's, and even like, like, you know, we, we brought up food, like my, my goal is like, you know, as, as weird as it sounds, like, you know, I always want to have a six pack till I'm 40, 50, 60 years old. And because of that, you know, I'm going to eat healthy, but in turn, like, it's going to help my organs. It's going to help me, you know, just like, like I said, anti-inflammatories, like, because I'm eating healthy and I want to achieve that six pack, it's going to like help everything throughout that. Right. You know? You're, you're so, going to get healthy. Right on the inside yeah. because of that goal exactly right, you know, right. so you know setting goals is like you know when, when i go and talk to the students um that's like the first thing i say to them is you know the first thing you guys should do you know before your school year or even daily or weekly is set goals and, and if you achieve those goals now you set other goals you know so it's right. just kind of an ongoing thing to push yourself cool and y you know you didn't mention it but i th this is something that i noticed is that um so not only setting goals, but being coachable. And there's something to be said about someone that's, you know, had a full scholarship to college, has won a World Series, um, is in the major leagues, uh, and is continually trying to get better. And, like, you ask questions nonstop. So, you know, being coachable and being able to ask for help um, is going to get you further along. Uh, you know, so many people out there that um, try it their own way right. and they bump their head a million times and they don't want to, like, you know, just surrender to the fact that, hey, this guy could probably help me. Or, right. um, and here's someone that's achieved a great level of, you know, um, sport and you're still willing to be open minded to learn more. Um, about many different, like we've talked about many different things, but you're always open to learning different things and you're always asking questions. That's like a key thing. Yeah, and, and you know, we talked about that. You know, I'm a professional baseball player. I'm not a professional weightlifter trainer. Um, that's why I go to you. You know, I go to, I have a trainer. You know, I have doctors because that I'm not, that's not my profession. Right. You know, right. so I'm going to let whoever else's profession take care of me and, and listen to whatever they say. You know, I want to, when I work out, I want to do things right. You know, I don't want to do things wrong because one, I'm going to hurt myself. Two, I'm not getting anything out of it. Right, right, right. Very cool, man. Um, so, anything else you wanna you wanna touch on or um, talk about with the upcoming season or uh, how you feeling for the upcoming season? You excited? Yeah, I'm, I feel great, man. I'm I'm excited. Uh, like I said, we we head out here at February sixth, and um, you know, I'm excited for the opportunity to play again. Yeah, for sure. We're all excited yeah. for the season. I know that, um, you know, I know the crew at Hanley Strength is, is super excited for you. Um, I want to give a shout out to Eric Cressy, right? Um, yeah. He's been a big part of this as well. Um, he writes the programming for Matt um, and, and sends it down to us. We implement it. Um, and, uh, and that's been a great, great experience as well. Yep. Um, he's been a great asset. Uh, as far as like uh, trainer to trainer, I, I, you know, so so that's a big shout out to him, um, and uh, you know, and that, and that and that's really it. I have one more question for you. It came through on Instagram, and uh, the question comes from a Miss Natalie Caesar, and the question is, she wants to know how come you don't empty the dishwasher. <laughs> Uh, you got to answer it. You got to answer it, buddy. That's funny. Because um, she likes to do it. That's her job. Ah, she, she, he put she, it on she you. enjoys emptying the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if that was the right answer, man. That's funny. I think we stumped him, Matt. Yeah, I think we stumped I him. The trash. That's good. 
<laughs> That's great. So, um, yeah, so, dude, thanks for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks um, for having me on here. You know, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. For sure. You know that. We're, we're all in your corner. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Um, until next time, right? Yep. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Like, but you gotta learn, like, you know what I, I don't learn.